Bonnie's a nose, the prizes and blood drains down like devil's rain. We'll bathe tonight. Turned inside out I gotta have you on my wall Gotta have you on my wall I want your skull my wall Gonna hack the heads off little girls and put them on my wall Jamie, uh, you are a uh, professional cryptologist, is that right? A cryptozoologist? Not accurate, but uh, sure. What, 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 what well, do you do? Well, well, let's just say I am a folklore enthusiast. We'll, enthusiast. We'll, we'll say that. We'll say that. Enthusiast. Okay, yeah. so uh, this is not to you. This is just to my producers. Uh, enthusiast? Okay, uh, so what? So uh, I, I would assume professionally, though you you work in this field, is that is that correct? No. That, no. No. What do you what do you what do you do? What uh, I, I help uh, I help kids read better. This is my main job. Okay, so we are here uh, talking about uh, Kentucky's own uh, cryptid, uh, the Popelik monster. Uh, how how does he read, Jamie? Is he a good reader? Uh, I would assume not. Okay. Uh, no, ba based on uh, based on the stories, I would expect he probably does not have much experience with or time for reading. Okay, well, thank you for your professional opinion mm -hmm. on that. Tell us, for people who don't know, uh, who is the Pope Lick Monster? Uh, well, uh, Kentucky, as many other states, uh, is home to many uh, monsters, or as some would call cryptids, uh, including uh, famously Barilla or the uh, Gateway Werewolf, okay. which is uh, named for two animals that it is not. 
A bear, bear and a werewolf. werewolf. Yeah. Okay. A bear and a gorilla. A said, gorilla. I'm sorry, gorilla. Yeah, yeah. Half bear, half gorilla, all wolf. Okay. Uh, or we have uh, the transplant from England, spring heel Jack, famous for uh, terrorizing old Louisville in the 1800s. Uh, we have some that we share with other states, including uh, the frog monsters of, Licking, of the Licking River, or sheep squatch as well, which we share with West Virginia. Half sheep, half sasquatch. I uh, yeah, okay. well, that one is what it sounds like. Uh, but, uh, and of course, we have uh, the eel pig of Harrington Lake, Half eel, half pig. Yes. Is it? Does it live in the water? It does. But it looks like a pig. I yes. Assume. It looks okay. like a pig with a long eel-like tail. Okay. Uh, but of all of them, probably the most famous, especially these days, uh, is the Pope Lake monster, also known as the Goat Man of Kentucky, uh, which lives uh, gets its name Pope Lake monster from the fact that it uh, haunts the uh, trestle over the Pope Lake Creek, which is a branch of uh, Floyd's Fork out in the Fisherville. Neighborhood of Louisville. Have you have you been there? Have you gone looking uh, for? I have not, and in fact, it is strongly discouraged for people to do that. Uh, uh, there are fences, and you will be arrested for trespassing of people if the police see you out there. Okay, so you haven't seen the Goat Lake Monster. Uh, <laughs> the Goat Lake Monster? No, I have not. Are there photos, or is there any physical evidence? Uh, Why are people so convinced that it exists? Uh, well. Uh, this is not one of those cryptids where there are uh, official documented sightings. Uh, it is more, much more in the realm of urban legend, but it is a story that has been passed around uh, for decades and decades. Every, uh, every teen uh, in Louisville and the surrounding areas uh, probably hears about this story and feels pressured to go out hunting for the public monster. Okay. Um, so, so, so pretend, uh, and you've kind of done this a little bit, but be the top of the Wikipedia page, All right. um, and maybe, maybe in a narratival sense, tell us the story of the Pope Lake monster. All right. So there are several different uh, traditions, but I find that if you you can find a way to uh, combine them, you get something of a cohesive narrative. The idea is you've got a half man, half goat. Not necessarily with the goat head is usually described as being more like a satyr as having a human-like face with horns, shaggy legs, a human torso, but usually described as having uh, shiny white skin, uh, a sharp nose, horns out of his head, long, scraggly black uh, hair. Um, but uh, yeah, he's supposed to be half man, half goat. Sometimes he's described as having sheep-like qualities as well. Um, but uh, <laughs> where did he come from? Uh, different stories, uh, usually starting with uh, a farmer who either was, uh, who raises goats and either was having um, unnatural relations with his goat, uh, ultimately producing a half man, half goat monster, uh, seems unlikely. That seems a little scientifically suspect. It does, uh, it does. Uh, however, uh, other stories tell that instead uh, he was sacrificing his goats in exchange for satanic power, which I think. I'm no expert, but that seems more likely yeah, than that. Yeah, I, I agree, Scientific, scientifically speaking. Yes, yeah. Uh, and so uh, the story then continues that what happens is, uh, as he grows in power and wickedness, eventually he dies, and as punishment for his transgressions in life, he is reincarnated as a uh, half goat, half human baby. Uh, and following that time, either uh, he is sold by his parents to a circus, or he is... He is sent out to live in the wild, and he's captured by the proprietor of a circus who hears rumors of uh, this goat man living in, at this time, the Canadian wilderness, uh, but he captures, uh, captures the goat, or the goat man is sold directly to him, uh, and he becomes a, a star attraction in a sideshow of his circus. And what happens is the circus train was traveling uh, through Louisville uh, and was derailed at the public trestle and everyone and everything on the train was killed, except for the goat man, who escapes and has been uh, living in the woods since ever, then. Ever since the, and what year would this have been, the train accident? Uh, long ago. So, so satanic power has probably made him long lived. I would assume. Okay, yeah. all right. I mean, as it, you know, it's been as long as it has been since circus has traveled by train. That, good point. Yeah. I probably could have answered that before I ask it then. Uh, so go Joseph Campbell for us for a minute. What's the, what's the story? What's the moral that we should take away from the, the Pope Lake monster? Uh, I feel like the main moral is don't walk on train trestles, probably. 
is the main because uh, because you encounter him when you go to the train trestle, and which is 100 feet off the ground. Uh, I believe it runs for a total of it's over 700 feet long. And the deal is, uh, if you go out there to try and find him, and you walk out onto the train trestle, he'll pop out, or he'll lure you onto the train trestle, either by uh, vocal mimicry or hypnosis or some other means, he gets you out on the train trestle and either he freezes you in your tracks so you get hit by a train or uh, the sight of him is so disturbing that you will jump off of to the trestle from, to yeah. get away from him uh, or in some versions he has a giant uh, axe that he uses to chop you up which that may just be by similarity and analogy to the goat man of Maryland which is a different creature, seems, seems, similar but distinct. An axe seems a little pedestrian to me, to it's, be honest. It does, it does. Uh, I mean, it's, it does uh, seem to ignore the whole train. And motif why see. make a deal with the devil if you're just going to kill people with an axe? Exactly. If you can't get at least hypnotic powers. <laughs> exactly. Right. So let's real quick, uh, I want to go through, you tell me yes or no if you believe in the existence of this thing. Okay. Uh, the public monster. Obviously. Bigfoot. Sure. Nessie. Sure. Aliens. Mm-hmm. Uh, viable Trump presidency? No. No. no okay. Don't be ridiculous. All right. So I think that uh, I think that answers all the questions I have. Um, anything you'd like to say in parting about the the Pope Lake monster? Goatman lives. Goatman lives. All right. I want your